Welcome to my chambers. What is obstruction of justice? Late last week, when the Attorney General of the United States re released a redacted version of the report of the special counsel Robert Mueller into Russian interference with the 2016 election, he made a number of conclusions. One is that the Russians did materially and substantially interfere. They probably did not affect the ultimate outcome, but they did interfere. They were physically here and they were digitally here. Two is that even though the Trump campaign had 127 documented communications with these Russians between July 2015, when the campaign started, and November 2016, when it ended, 127 communications, the government was unable to prove a conspiracy, an illegal agreement between the campaign and the Russians to interfere with the outcome of the election. The third conclusion that Mueller came to was a little bit more troublesome. That conclusion is that the President of the United States probably committed the crimes of obstruction of justice, but probably should not be charged for them. That's a head scratcher. Is the President above the law? What do we do if the President commits a crime? Do we let him get away with it? The crime is not a difficult one to understand. Obstruction of justice, the statute making obstruction criminal, prohibits interfering or attempting to interfere with a criminal prosecution or an investigation that the government's conducting. So if I'm about to go into a courthouse and testify against my neighbor, and the neighbor's kid comes and tackles me to prevent me from getting in the courthouse, and I eventually pick myself up and get in and give the testimony, the neighbor's kid can be charged with obstruction because he attempted to interfere with the work of a jury that was waiting to hear my testimony. So when Bob Mueller said the President of the United States did about a dozen things to slow down, impede, negate, or interfere with the investigation of his campaign or of his former National Security Advisor, General Michael Flynn, that's a serious allegation of criminal activity. So when the President asked his former advisor and my former colleague at Fox, K.T. McFarland, to write an untruthful letter to the file knowing the government would subpoena it, that's obstruction of justice. When the president asked Corey Lewandowski, his former campaign manager, to get Mueller fired, that's obstruction of justice. When the president asked his then White House counsel to get Mueller fired and then lie about it, that's obstruction of justice. When he asked Don McGahn to go back to the special counsel and change his testimony, that's obstruction of justice. When he dangled a pardon in front of Michael Cohen in order to keep Cohen from testifying against him, that's obstruction of justice. Why not charge him? Because the Attorney General of the United States would have blocked such a charge. Because the Attorney General of the United States is of the view that obstruction of justice can only occur if you're interfering with a criminal investigation of yourself. But that's not what the obstruction statute says. And that's not what law enforcement believes and that's not what prosecutors do. Prosecutors prosecute people who interfere with government functions. And that's what the president did by obstruction. Where is this going to end? We don't know. But I'm disappointed in the behavior of the president. His job is to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States to uphold and to enforce federal law, not to violate it. If he had ordered his aides to violate federal law, to save a human life, or to preserve human freedom, he would at least have a moral defense to his behavior. But ordering them to break federal law to save him from the consequences of his own behavior, that is immoral, that is criminal, that is defenseless, and that is condemnable. Welcome to my chambers. Fight the good fight. Fire!